Hello guys and welcome. In this video we'll be using Google Firebase and the JavaScript framework view to build in around 15 minutes a chatting web application like the one you're seeing right now. We're going to be using the Vue CLI to create a project by running Vue create in our terminal. In case you don't have the Vue CLI installed, I'm going to put a link to the documentation on how to install it down below in the description. Right after that, we're going to go ahead and run npm install firebase to download the firebase sdk then head on to the firebase console and create a new project i'm gonna call this one my view chat in this case i'm going to disable analytics because we are not going to use them head on to the web section and register the new web app You can set up Firebase hosting later as well, so I'm not going to mark it right now. Also, this code is available for you later. I'm going to show you where you just need to go to settings, project settings. And then down here, select config. This is what we're going to copy and paste into our main.js file in the view project over here we're gonna import the firebase sdk and paste the config variable we just copied then we're gonna use the firebase.initialize app function and pass in the firebase config variable and finally we're gonna make use of the onauth state change function to make sure the app is only rendered after the Firebase user has been loaded, as well as any time the authentication state changes so that the app itself reacts to it accordingly. So we just copy this render function in here and we're good to go. I'm going to go into the components folder and delete the hello world component. And I'm going to create two new files. One's going to be called chat.view and the other one's going to be called login.view. In here I'm just going to put a simple template tag with a div inside and some text just to identify them because these components are going to be the ones that are going to toggle depending on if the user is authenticated or, or not. So if the user has logged in then the chat.view component is going to be shown uh, but if the user is not logged in then the login.view component is going to be shown and i'm going to go into the app.view file and delete the hello world from here as well as the styles that come by default we're going to import both of the components we just created so import chat and import login then we need to put them in the components object down here and import the firebase library then we're going to create a view data object we're going to use the firebase.auth.current user to obtain the user information and store it in a variable then on top we're going to use the vf conditional attribute to show the chat component in case the user exists otherwise we're going to use a v else to render the login component we cast this out by running npm run serve in our terminal once it loads it's going to give us a url to test it out in a browser but first, we need to go to the Firebase console into the authentication section, then send method, and check that Google is enabled. We're going to open our login component, and in here I'm going to add a button. Then, for the script part of the component, I'm going to add a method inside the methods object from view and call it login submit 
Now this method is gonna be triggered with the button with on top using the click view attribute. We're gonna import the Firebase library. And since we're gonna be logging in with Google, we need to create a provider. Now this provider is gonna be Google Auth Provider. In this part, you can do two things. So you can do firebase.auth.signin with pop-up and pass in the provider, or you can also do sign in with redirect and pass in the provider. In my case, I'm gonna do sign in with redirect. And then since this is a promise, you can catch it and log the error. Now this is the same thing as just doing error, arrow function, and then printing out the variable. I'm just gonna leave it the short version. Then for our chat component at this moment, we're just gonna add a method, call it logout. And well, this is just gonna close the session we're gonna add a button with also a trigger for the logout method. And we need to import the Firebase library. And then it's just as simple as just writing firebase.auth.signout. Now we can go ahead and test this out in our browser. As you can see, there's the button, we log in, it takes us to the choose an account in the Google page, and then it goes back to... Now we need to add some styling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you all the CSS in the repository with the link down below in the description. I'm not going to get too deep into the CSS right now. You can just go ahead and copy it. We're going to paste some styles in the app.view file as well as some styles in the login.view. Now we are just going to add a class login container to the main div and it's going to give us something like this. Big button in the center that says login with Google. Now we need to go to the Firebase console into Cloud Firestore Click on create database, set it in test mode for right now, I click next, select a server, and after a couple seconds we're going to have the Cloud Firestore database running. Now for the chat.view, I'm going to go ahead and create a header and move the button we created into the header of the page. I'm also going to create the section where the messages are going to be and the form that is going to contain the input for the message and the send button. Now instead of triggering the sending method with the button, it is going to be triggered with the submission of the form. So I'm going to show you in a second. Now we also need to make a binding to a local variable. So I'm going to put a vmodal in the text input and then inside our data object, I'm going to create a variable, name it message, and it is going to be empty by default. Also a messages array variable. This is going to have all the messages in the chat. And just like on the other component, I'm going to create a user variable with the current user information. This time though, we're going to create also a DB for an instance of Firestore. So now, as you can see, in the form unsubmit, we're going to run a method called send message. 
So if the user presses enter or just clicks the submission button, this event is going to trigger. We're going to catch the event and prevent default so that the uh, page doesn't reload. And we're going to get all the message info that is going to be saved in the database. So the user UID, the display name that we're going to get from the user variable we created in the data section, as well as the photo URL also taken from the user variable on top and the text message that we're going to get from the message variable we created on top that is binded to our input now finally a created at um, input that takes the date and time from this moment and saves it so that later we can query the messages based on date. Now we're gonna do this the DV dot collection messages add message info and we're gonna create the async method so that it waits until this is finished to continue. And once it is finished, we're gonna clean the message input. So as you can see, there's the binding. We submit the form and the message input is cleaned. And if we go to the Cloud Firestore database, we can see there it is saved the message. Now we're going to go ahead and install a SAS loader just to give it a little bit more of styling to our chat. So go ahead and run this command. And then we're just going to go ahead and paste the styles from the repository. I'm going to leave you in the description. All these styles are already prepared. Now we're going to go ahead and create the first message div that is going to contain an image and a paragraph tag so a p tag now these can be sent or received there's two classes and depending on the class the styling is going to change of course now we're going to use the v4 attribute to list all the messages inside the messages array we created in the data object and then we're going to create a vbind key index this is barely or this is just only for performance now inside the p tag we're going to get the text from the message and the photo url from the message remember all of this is saved onto the database And as the alt, we're going to do the display name for the image. Now, we're going to use the mounted method from view that runs whenever the page first loads. And in here, we're going to list all the messages and put it put them inside the messages array we created in the data section. So we query the database of collection messages and we're going to order them by created at. Now on snapshot is going to, it is a callback function that runs every time there's a change in the database, returns a query snapshot. Now this query snapshot contains the documents, but we need to um, get the data out of e each document. So we're going to use the map function We can do doc dot data. And basically the result is going to go onto the messages uh, array. So now they should be updating real time. Now the 
class, we're going to change it depending on if the user UID in the message is the same as my user UID, the, the one I'm logged in with. So to do this, I'm going to put a method sent or received and I'm going to send as a parameter the user UID in the message. So this method is gonna check if that UID is the same as my UID. And if it is, it's gonna return a sent string. I'm gonna show you in a second. So the method receives the user UID. And if it is the same as my UID, the one I'm logged in with, is going to return a sent string otherwise it's going to return a received string so the class is automatically going to change as well now just really quickly i need to change the submit attribute to v on submit dot prevent and this is going to help us prevent the form from reloading the page as well as using the disabled attribute in case the message is not there, which means the user hasn't typed in. Now, we're going to add a div with a reference scrollable at the end of the messages so that every time the user uh, sends a new message, the scroll bar goes to the bottom of the messages. So we're going to get the reference scrollable and we're going to do scroll into view. So we're going to scroll on all the way to the uh, div we just created. Behavior smooth is just for the animation, basically. So we're not going to need this anymore. Since it's an async event, that one doesn't work. Also, over here, I missed... Uh, I, I wrote message instead of MSG, just correct it to MSG. And if we check out, we send a message, it does work. So testing, and there it is. We've got a fully working real-time chat using Cloud Firestore from Firebase. As you can see, every message is saved onto the database. I'm just going to add a, a little bit of security onto the uh, rules here. I'm going to put um, match messages and I'm going to allow it, allow everyone to read the messages, but only write a new message if the UID you, you're sending the message with is the same as the UID in the message which means you can only send messages as yourself and not as any other person this is pretty simple we just save it literally one line of code and it's uh, secure now so we we're gonna check if I send it as myself it does work but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go on to the view tools extension and change uh, intentionally my UID to be another person but I'm still gonna be sending the message as myself so if I click hello try to send it I'm gonna get a, an error saying missing or insufficient permissions which means I cannot send messages as any other user with literally one line of code in the Firebase rules it's amazing so thank you so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It does help out a lot. I'm going to be posting um, new videos every week. So until next time.